colonel. This is a great pleasure to host you in Poland. You are experienced F-104 pilot and also a Eurofighter pilot. Uh, and you are the, somebody like a director of the Eurofighter program within the Italian Air Force. It's a great pleasure to, 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 to talk to you. Uh, sir, uh, how can you estimate the decision of the Italian government to enter the uh, Eurofighter uh, program and uh, from the political and uh, technological point of view? Yeah, okay, so Eurofighter was for sure for Italy a uh, huge opportunity. A very good challenge, but for sure, in my view, was an excellent decision for many reasons that I'm trying to expand a little bit more. Um, from uh, uh, an operational perspective, Eurofighter was uh, the opportunity to make a huge leap forward in the way the Italian Air Force envisaged and built the operational capability. Uh, I, I, as you said, I used to fly the F-104, so let's say a second generation airplane. I appreciate that that much. You, will be a, you are a, like an astronaut. I survived. And uh, in 2004, I jumped uh, two fully generation ahead on the, on the Eurofighter. And this was uh, quite a challenge, but was very, very instructive. Not just for the capability itself, that the beginning was purely air-to-air, -air, then it moved in the multi-role, full multi-role later on with the latest development, uh, but because the concept to building operational capability was completely different. So the idea that you were just procure a weapon system and then the operational pilot, the operational squadron, were doing their best to fly it at the best they could, has changed in a different way where basically new avionic architecture allow you with the parametric software, with the mission data dependent, to jump in and to fine tune the capability based on your skill. And so basically the Eurofighter that is a huge community multinational in Europe for four partner nations and the four partner company, the main partner company in Europe, generate this uh, club where you basically have access to the technology that are needed to generate this kind of capability that now you need as Air Force to face the future challenge and the nowadays challenges. So from an operational perspective it was definitely a huge jump forward, not just for the capability itself, but for an organizational point of view. So Italian Air Force enriched themselves just getting uh, much more modern than it was in the past. And I believe this is very important. How, what about the tactical experience of the Italian Air Force? Because you have uh, behind your belt some tactical uh, combat experience of, of, that, uh, of the operational of, uh, of the, that fighter. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so since 2004, we, were, um, we got the initial combat readiness on the weapon system just one year later. So we start with uh, air policing, uh, either for Italy, we never stopped. 24 uh, hours a day, 360 days uh, a year, so no stop. And also for the other allied partner, Iceland, uh, Lithuania, Baltic Air Police. Um, and, and as we speak, uh, we made the unified protector in uh, Libya, that was the main asset of that operation, where we deployed uh, in our southern base in uh, Trapani, and the platform showed a very, very strong efficiency and robustness with more than 99% of uh, of uh, sorties. Um, and as we speak, the airplane is doing a, a red chain in, in Kuwait. So we are flying in Kuwait. So we just came back from Iceland with um, very cold weather and we are flying uh, this summer with 55 degrees in, in Kuwait. So the platform is very, uh, let's say, flexible, uh, very... Multi-role. It is, it is, because uh, uh, as I told by design, it was born as purely air-to-air. -air. Uh, because basically this was, this was uh, the follow-up uh, of, of the tornado. And in this respect, it's important to say that it was also a very good program to maintain the industrial base of UK, Germany and Italy that were already committed with the tornado program. So there was a huge engineering community out of these uh, uh, aerospace defense uh, uh, companies in Europe that took all the experience matured by tornado and they brought it in the, in the Eurofight. The tornado, as a matter of fact, was, uh, was uh, a technological bridge to the next generation. And this was so convincing that uh, also the club expanded to the Spain. 
And if you look retrospectively, what was uh, the Spanish uh, defense industry, the CASA, before the Eurofighter and right now, you may imagine that was a very, very good opportunity for all the community. Uh, excuse me, how those experiences could uh, be useful uh, when the Polish uh, uh, government and the Polish MOD will select the uh, new generation fighter in the program Harpia. How uh, could be the Italian Air Force experience value for us uh, because we have uh, frequent uh, visitors from the Italian Air Force, in, in, in the, namely the uh, Eurofighters are frequently visiting us. Uh, to be honest, I don't have a full detail on the ARPA project, but uh, as you can imagine, there is no easy answer to, to this question. So uh, those uh, uh, procurement programs are very complex, very important, not just on a single domain of the operational capability, they expand in many other domains. So this is something that uh, should be uh, brought to the attention of politicians, starting from what is the Polish posture for defense. So what is how does uh, politics in, in, in Poland sees their, um, their uh, uh, defense, uh, defense uh, uh, endeavors? What capabilities do we need, simply? Uh, but, but I was just talking about, not just about the capability, what is the role of uh, industrial defense in uh, Poland in respect to the operational capability. So, uh, in my view, and if I may, um, I believe that uh, the current Italian defense policy in the air combat, uh, it's very, uh, very good. Uh, we are based, basically, uh, our concept on the double platform and double source of supplies that gives a procurement with the US, with the F-35 project, the possibility to expose our Air Force, our technician, our engineer to the best edge technology, but on the same end, we can support us keep developing our industrial base with, uh, you know, with endogenous, with European multinational parties, where we have a full and uh, uh, profound access to the technology that we now need to fine tune the capability. So I would suggest that uh, when you enter in this kind of big, huge and long-lasting procurement contract, you need to ask yourself uh, what you are looking for. If you are looking for just uh, uh, capability and then if this is the case, you need to understand what are the challenges you want to face, what do you need to fill the gap and uh, how do you envisage uh, to cope with the new technological trend. Technology in the air combat are changing very fast. Everything is getting more and more integrated. Uh, the softwares and uh, the digital environment in the cockpit are the main, uh, let's say, the main asset to build capability. And to do this, you need to be able to play with the software almost in real time, day by day, to make sure that the capability you bought really respond to your needs. Uh, the next question is about the future of the Eurofighter Typhoon uh, within uh, the uh, ranks and uh, units of the Italian Air Force. Yes, so uh, as, I, as I said so far, uh, Typhoon, the Eurofighter program, it's much more than a normal procurement contract. It's just, uh, you know, it, it's a big club among Europe where uh, you share knowledge, uh, you share information to add value one over the others to make the best you can on the weapon system. As we started flying in 2003, the development of the platform never stopped with what we call so far the continuous development. Um, now the major new development is uh, the ISCAN radar that uh, is, is going to fly uh, on, uh, on a development airplane uh, as we speak in those days and will be delivered uh, in September next year to Kuwait Air Force that will uh, procured, has procured uh, 28 airplanes. The first one will be delivered uh, next year with the first ISCAN radar. Soon after the ISCAN radar that will continue uh, to, to be developed, uh, there will be the long-term evolution, so a major change in the avionic architecture to make it more flexible so the idea that there is behind this change to uh, foresee the next generation that as you may imagine uh, now there is a lot of talk about what is going to be the future combat air system there is the franco-german uh, this is this is what i want to 
a furlough because you are also in charge of the Tempest project. It means uh, Italian, uh, uh, Italian Air Force in Italy are going to enter, or enter it already. The uh, Anglo International project of the new generation fighter. This is a Tempest. So this is connected in some way with the uh, constantly developing the, uh, the Eurofighter, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, involved in this uh, Tempest dialogue and this is uh, definitely connected with, uh, with Eurofighter since for Italy the next generation air combat aircraft will be the normal, the natural son of the Eurofighter. So the Eurofighter, as a matter of fact, there is no other way uh, since employs the same skill, the same engineer, and the same uh, air forces uh, will be the technological bridge as it was the tornado for the Eurofighter, the tornado will be the technological bridge for the next generation. Um, to be honest, the, 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 the dialogue, the narrative around the Tempest, it's, uh, it's very profound, it's very important because uh, uh, we believe in Italy that the legitimate Italian interest, not just the operational capability, but in general terms, uh, the support to our industry and all the, uh, the value and the interest that there are behind uh, very complex and very valuable air forces, um, that all those Italian needs are much more protected if we join in a multinational environment where we try to fill the gap with a major play around the world since we have to recognize that now the market is completely uh, globalized and so any single nation by themselves uh, will not be able to face by themselves the technological endeavor, the, the, the technological challenges, uh, the operational challenges that the future may bring. In this respect, we need, first of all, to try to aggregate the demand so that the initial order are basically so important that you can accept to invest a lot of money, the money that are required in research and development to envisage top-edge capability so that this investment, when you spread out on the, on the unit cost, has, let's say, a reasonable impact. And that's what Italy is doing with UK to try to model a new innovative collaboration model among the industry and among the government to make it appealing to a wider community so that everybody can legitimate, get what they uh, foresee the ambition in support the industrial base, in having a fair and equitable return out of investment. And so it's important in this phase that the European market is changing to make sure everybody find in this next program, whatever it is, the opportunity to get the overall package, not just the object, not just the weapon system, not just the capability, but everything that is around this program. In this respect, we believe that the dialogue that has been going so far with Italy and UK it's, uh, it's uh, pretty good, it's going in, in the right direction. Nothing is still frozen, there is still a strong debate, uh, but we believe that uh, as a good opportunity to, to take off. Thank you very much, Colonna. A lot of interesting information, and uh, I wish you a great success in both in developing the, the more, still versatile and uh, most modern uh, Eurofighters and also success in Tempest program. Thank you very much and uh, I hope this is not the last time you are in Poland and we look forward for your frequent visits in Poland. Thank you so much.